Welcome back to the Evora GT 410 Sport that Lotus have lent me for a few months. Uh, last time you saw me in this car, I was probably somewhere in Switzerland on my first road trip post the coronavirus lockdown. Well, you probably know because I've talked about it a lot in other videos and across my social media. I had to cut that road trip short because the UK changed some of their kind of coronavirus restrictions and essentially I had to race back to the UK to avoid having to quarantine for two weeks when I returned. So I never got to make a video that I really wanted to make, which is kind of talking about my time so far with this car and during the road trip because I covered around 2,000 miles in the Savora during my time through France, down to Monaco, through Italy and Switzerland and then back to the UK. So I feel like I know it pretty damn well and whilst I'm sure we all kind of are aware of how good Lotus are to drive and this really is good to drive, more on that later, I kind of want to address what it's like to live with because that's the question mark I had as I set off for the trip and having spent so much time with it over the last few weeks. I feel like I'm in a good place now to address some of my own and hopefully some of your questions. And we're gonna kick things off by pulling over and talking about space. I'm sure space isn't a word that you usually associate with lotuses. Lotuses? Low tie. Lotus eye. Anyway, in my mind, lotus cars have always been small, nimble, stripped back and, and compact. But this is a Navora, essentially Lotus's GT car. And to be a GT car, a Grand Tourer, you need to have space for people to put things in. So whilst this car is a mid-engine car, like many other mid-engine sports and supercars, it doesn't have a boot in the front. Instead, you get one boot at the back. Now, if I open up this very lovely bit of carbon fiber and put this, uh, what would you call that, stalk up, uh, you can now see the rear boot. It is actually deceptively large. It's got kind of cubby holes to the side and they have been told you can fit golf clubs in here because apparently that's the thing that Grand Tourers are marked upon. Now the one thing to note is obviously with the boot being back here, it's right next to the engine, which does mean it gets very hot. So I wouldn't put food or cosmetics back here. I learned that the hard way, but it's perfect for soft bags on long journeys, essentially clothes and other bits and bobs, and you can fit a ton of soft bags. But if you're then going, well, hold on a second, what if I wanna go and do the grocery shop, or if I wanna do a trip with cosmetics, what's gonna happen? Well, thankfully, the Avora does come as a two plus two, or if you don't select the rear seats, you get a quite massive rear shelf. Let me show you. So yes, here you can see the rear shelf. At the moment, I have Twiggy, my little puppy's bed here, and my big old camera bag. On the journey down to Monaco, uh, it was me and my girlfriend, Vicky, and we had a huge suitcase back here, a carry-on bag, hand luggage. You can just keep ramming things. It gets really steep and high. So yes, very, very usable. So anyone who is concerned about maybe their groceries getting a bit too hot, you can really use this rear shelf. Anyway, let's jump in because I want to talk about what it's like from here, the driver's seat. Now, a very important thing to note, I am six foot two, but I find this cabin really comfortable. On the journey down to the south of France, I thought we were going to be miserable. Honestly, I said to Vicky, bring loads of pillows. It's not going to be a comfy ride, but it'll be worth it once we get to those mountain roads. But we're actually super chilled in here. It's got cruise control. These seats are fantastic. I have lots of leg room. I mean, this seat goes all the way back, so I have no issues there. The one sort of thing I would say is if you are a taller lady or gentleman, uh, the roof line is quite low, which when you're going fast, is quite nice because it's almost like a sort of Le Mans race car. You've got the sort of letterbox windscreen and you're really dialed into the road in front. However, negotiating around town and sometimes when it's sort of tight or you need to look out, I, I find myself ducking down a bit. So that's the only thing which, as I say, my height is a disadvantage because if I was a little bit smaller, I'd probably have a bit of bit of a better vision. But yeah, it's super nice. Lots of little racy touches, tons of Alcantara, the contrast stitching. I do love the spec of this particular car. I think that kind of talks you through some of the details of what it's like to live in terms of practicality and functionality. Let's start it up and go for a drive. <laughs> I 
guess let's kick things off talking about this car in its kind of most subdued form on an everyday, ordinary basis when you're not in sport or race mode thrashing the hell out of the thing. Now, of course, this is the sportiest version of the Avora that Lotus makes. So whilst it is still a GT car, it's kind of like, well, it's a Cayman GT4 rival. Let's just put it like that. It is dialed in and it does feel that way. The ride is pretty firm. The clutch is quite springy and the car does feel like it wants you to really push on. But as you can tell, it's actually really enjoyable just to poodle around in. Firstly, this thing gets a ton of attention. So you feel like you're in something special. People always come up and go, oh, what's that? Or they stop and kind of gawp. So you're like, oh yes, here I am in my GT410 Sport. But the gearbox is easy to use, despite the fact, as I said, that the clutch is a little bit springy. It's not fantastic in traffic, but like this, A to B, grand touring, it's super nice. The funny thing is though, fundamentally, as I mentioned, this is the sportiest version of the Evora, and I don't think you're buying a GT410 Sport for the GT characteristic. You're, you're really buying it for the sport part, because otherwise you just buy a normal Evora. And I have never known a car more transformed by a single button. I mean, actually there's a few buttons, but, but the one button which is, just makes this car a completely different car is here, and it's the exhaust button. Because actually, well look, let me show you first, I'll get around this corner, and without the sport exhaust button on, I will do an acceleration, and it's all just very nice and subdued, isn't it? And you know, you're just potting around, you can have a conversation with your passenger, listen to your radio, get your Apple CarPlay on, but if you hit that button, Check this out. Now, now we have the 410 Sport for you. And this car, this car's a car that I will admit, I've kind of fallen in love with because this is the way that I've pretty much driven this car for the last month. I mean, non-stop in sport or race, or at least with the sports exhaust on, because it is so engaging, it's so emotive. You can't help but smile. You drive like a bit of an Asbo, but a kind of dialed in racing Asbo, someone who knows how to tackle the road ahead of them. And, and it's just so good. It does kind of make everyone else want to race you because when you come out of a junction, making that much noise, everyone else goes, oh, we're off, here we go. And you're not always going that fast, nor to 60, as I mentioned when I collected the cars, around four seconds. So it's not like, oh my God, he's gone. It's usable power, which is another thing I'm a huge fan of at the moment, but usable power with an outrageous soundtrack. And I just find myself constantly going through gears just to kind of rev the thing out or downshift or, or do whatever I can to make myself giggle. And that's what's brilliant about this car. It is a giggle machine, but a very focused giggle machine. And I can't help but compare it to other cars out there. And really, I keep coming back to the GT4. And whilst I haven't made a video about the 718 GT4, I have about the Spider. And I felt that, that that car was almost too serious. And whilst I feel like maybe this Evora could do as good a job as a GT4 around most roads and potentially even most tracks, I think you're gonna have so much more fun doing it. It's just absolutely amazing. And then, then you find a corner and oh my God, firstly, Dodge Viper, very nice. But you find a corner and this thing just laughs at you. As in, come on, like I can do more than that. Crack on, son. <laughs> it's just outrageous. I feel like I'm in like the Nürburgring 24 hours. That every single road feels that intense. I'm just like, yes. I remember that letterbox windscreen I told you about earlier? That's what's great when you start pushing on like this because it really focuses you. No distractions, it's all about driving. And that ride just feels so solid and plugged in. And you've got to remember, I'm on a very bumpy UK road here. It's not breaking my back, but it's letting me know what's underneath me. And there we go, look at that, around the corner bags in the back flying around. 
Oh my god, hold on Twiggy, we're away! It's just so great and those big old brakes, very confident inspiring, you know you can slam on them and you're going to come to a stop. It's so engaging, I'm literally now after that short burst, adrenaline is rushing, my arms are getting a little bit stiff, which they shouldn't be. You've got to be remain loose and fluid. I've always been told that by pro drivers with the thickest chest. Ah, oh, I've definitely what's called drunk the Kool-Aid because this car, and especially in Switzerland, was just outrageous. And here's a straight, so let's crack on. <laughs> oh my God, it feels so quick. 410 horsepower, I've said it over and over again. The world has gone mad when they start making cars over 450 horsepower. No one needs it. I mean, it's just, it's just unruly. This is the perfect sweet spot. Oh, that gearbox and that change and that sound and oh, right, let's put a window down just because that's when it even gets crazier. And that's another way that I drove the majority of the time, especially on the mountain passes. Windows down, sun was shining and away we were. <laughs> I can see in the corner of my eye, Twiggy keeps glancing up at me like, how much longer is this going to go on for? Quite a while, Twiggy. I apologise. I have genuinely enjoyed my time with this car so much that I find myself quite consistently on the Lotus Configurator. Do you know you can get these cars with tan interiors? Can you imagine this thing kind of pastel olive green with a tan interior? I mean, it's just too exciting to think about. But every time I do spec one up and get a little bit overexcited, I think, well, for me personally, I'm not sure it would make sense for me to add a GT410 Sport to the garage permanently because I think it's a bit too similar to my 360. Now, I don't know if you'll see that as a compliment or actually something a little bit negative, but I see it as a huge compliment because you all know I adore and love my 360. And so many characteristics of this car, I think are similar to the Ferraris. Okay, maybe you have to concede in some sort of areas and as a taller guy, that kind of leaning down to kind of look out every now and again, did frustrate me at times, especially in the Alps when I wanted to take in the view. I kind of wanted to push the roof off, at which point maybe I should just get an Exige. But it's just so engaging and so capable. That's the thing which I think I didn't expect. I knew how good this thing would be once I put it into sport mode, once I found a tight and twisty road. But I've been amazed by how easy it is to live with and how fun it is to live with. That's the thing. It's not just about the fact that you can do longer miles, you can still fit tons of stuff in it. It's the fact that People really notice it. You feel excited walking up to it. When you come around the corner and you see it, you go, wow, that's a cool looking car. It's just a really enjoyable car to live with. And in an age when a lot of sort of new and modern cars don't tend to give me that kind of buzz and excitement. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. If there's anything you kind of wanted to know about the car, which I haven't addressed, please comment below. I'll try and get back to as many people as possible. But yes, if you're in the market for a two or two plus two sort of dialed in sports car, maybe have a think about a Lotus Evora GT410 Sport, at least go for a test drive, it might surprise you. Anyway, for now, give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and make sure to stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.